To download more lectures, learn more about our project, and to help support it, visit www.bayina.com slash dream. That's B-A-Y-Y-I-N-A-H slash dream. You are free to share these recordings with family and friends. Thank you and Jazakumullah Khairan for helping us make our dream a reality. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Waylun Lil Mutaffifin الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين كلا إن كتاب الفجار لفي سجين وما أدراك ما سجين كتاب مرقوم ويل يومئذ للمكذبين الذين يكذبون بيوم الدين وما يكذب به إلا كل معتد أثيم إذا تتلى عليه آياتنا قال أساطير الأولين كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون كلا إنهم عن ربهم يومئذ لمحجوبون ثم إنهم لصال الجحيم ثم ما يقال هذا الذي كنتم به تكذبون كلا إن كتاب الأبرار لفي عليين وما أدراك ما عليون كتاب مرقوم يشهده المقربون إن الأبرار لفي نعيم على الأرائك ينظرون تعرف في وجوههم نظرة النعيم يسقون من رحيق مختوم ختامه مسك وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون ومزاجه من تسنيم عينا يشرب بها المقربون إن الذين أجرموا كانوا من الذين آمنوا يضحكون وإذا مروا بهم يتغامزون وإذا انقلبوا إلى أهلهم انقلبوا فكهين وإذا رأوهم قالوا إن هؤلاء لضال وما أرسلوا عليهم حافظين فاليوم الذين آمنوا من الكفار يضحكون على الأرائك ينظرون هل ثوب الكفار ما كانوا يفعلون 
رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته الى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر واللهم لا تجعلنا من المطففين امين يا رب العالمين This surah begins with uh, a profound declaration against a certain kind of criminal. Inshallah ta'ala, as we discuss this surah, uh, Surah Al-Mutaffifeen, we have to first understand something about this word, and bi Allah, by means of it, we will understand its connection to what is coming before it. And I forgot, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so, first of all, let's understand the word mutaffifeen. Wailul lil mutaffifeen. The word mutaffifeen, it comes from taffafa, ta, fa, and fa. And it's a certain kind of person that is meant by mutaffif. It is a person who essentially when they're in business and they are trying to get, like they're getting a product from somebody, then they like to get a little more than they deserve. And when they have to give, they give a little less than they should. And this is done in two things, intangible and in intangible things. For example, in services, it could be you owe somebody hours of work. So you'll, you owe somebody five hours of work, you want to get away four hours and 58 minutes, you want to steal those two. Who'll, who'll notice? It's no big deal, right? Or you owe somebody two pounds of rice. So you'll put 1.99, you know, 99% of the two pounds, you won't put the whole thing. Who's going to notice? Who's going to notice that little bit of a movement of the needle in the, in the scale? Right? This is a mutafif who gets away with very, very little, so little that the customer who gets swindled can't even come back and say, hey, pay me up, pay up. Or they're going to feel bad asking about it, so they kind of easily get away with it. Right? So it's not like they're stealing huge amounts of money or they're robbing banks or anything. But they're taking a little bit away from what is supposed to be taken. Right? Little tiny imbalance. Now this connects to a lot of things we studied in the previous surah. First of all, Allah Azza wa Jal told us, كَلَّا بَلْ تُكَذِّبُونَ بِالدِّينَ in the previous surah we learned in Surah Al-Infitar, you lie against the deen. And we said deen is the exact portion. This is the idea of deserving an exact portion and giving the exact portion. And on the day of resurrection, we will be given the exact portion that we are due. The other thing we found in the previous surah, الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ He created you, he balanced you, he evened you out, and he gave you, not only did he balance you, it also means he programmed you with a sense of balance. Now look, the person who even cheats others, who cheats others in, in business, who cheats others in giving them the exact amount. When it comes to receiving, do they want the full amount themselves? They don't want to be cheated themselves, they want to get the full amount. So they understand a sense of balance. They wouldn't wish that one of their family members would be cheated in business. They wouldn't wish that their wife or their daughter or their son or their brother, etc., etc., they would get less than they deserve. But when it comes to their own customer, they give less than they deserve. You see? So even they, with, deep within themselves, they have a sense of balance. It is because of that sense of balance they feel entitled to certain things. So this is a mutaffif. And it contradicts the things that Allah Azza wa speaks of before. The other thing that's really interesting and remarkable here, one thing I didn't comment about at the end of the previous surah, Allah Azza wa says, وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ There's taqdeem and ta'khir here. وَالْأَمْرُ لِلَّهِ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ Normally we would say in Arabic, وَالْأَمْرُ لِلَّهِ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ That the decision will belong to Allah on that day. But Allah Azza wa Jal moves the sequence of the sentence around. He says, "Well, amru yoma idin lillah." That's how the surah ends, which implies it is on that day that the decision will belong exclusively to Allah. It is on that day that the decision will exclusively belong to Allah. The the verbiage and the way Allah says that implies that in this dunya we have some decisions that we need to make ourselves. On that day, we will not be able to make any decisions. But here, Allah has given us, us some choice. Until that day comes, you have to make some decisions. Which is why Allah says, وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ All matters, all decisions are returned back to Him. The believers are commanded to, to enforce the good. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهُونَ عَلْ الْمُنْكَرِ This is some amr that we have in this. Also when Allah speaks about the kuffar, He says, أَمْ أَمْرَمُوا أَمْرًا Have they made up their mind about this matter of staying into, as disbelievers? So in this dunya, we have some control over affairs. Allah has given us some license in our affairs. In the previous surah, Allah says, on that day, the license, the, the control, the decision-making ability will be exclusively to Allah. And in this surah, in the beginning, we find the kinds of decisions people make when they have the freedom to make decisions. They do tatfif al-mizan. 
They give a little less than they're supposed to. So it begins with the words wail. Wail is a, an Arabic word for either cursing somebody, to give, you know, curse on them that may destruction fall upon them, may they become sick, may they become diseased, may they become, you know, may they be destroyed. It's, it's an ugly kind of word. And it's a word used for someone that's completely been ruined. When they have no, a loss of words, they don't know what else to say. They say, ya wayla, you know, waylata. Okay? Or ya waylana even. Destruction has fallen upon ourselves. Here, waylun lil mutaffifin, ultimate destruction, horrible destruction, is for those who engage in this kind of tatfif, those who just scale back a little bit, they take just a little bit away without the customer or the one they owe to noticing. Now this, again, notice it's in two things. It's giving more, or, or it's giving, taking more than you should and giving less than you should. These are both things that include, that are included in the word mutafif. Okay, this is a person who does both of these crimes. If you go further, then you find something really interesting. Allah Azza wa Jal continues to explain what they do. Even though the word mutaffif includes the full definition, Allah Azza wa Jal gives a full explanation of what makes them a mutaffif. But before we go forward, just a couple of things about this term again. We find this in a sahih hadith mentioned in the Bukhari. وَلَا طَفَّفُ الْكَيْلِ إِلَّا مُنِعُ النَّبَاتِ وَأُخِذُوا بِالسِّنِينَ It's a powerful hadith. They did not do cheat a little bit in business, طَفَّفُ الْكَيْلِ In giving the weight, they only gave a little, took a little bit away or gave a little bit you know, uh, 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 less than they should have. Right? These people did not do so except two things happened. The crops started, stopped growing. The produce in the land stopped growing. And the other thing that happened was they were, they were seized by means of drought. Water start, stopped coming. Meaning the nation started feeling you know, catastrophic natural, natural uh, problems. You know? we, we call them attacks of nature or mother nature is mad at us. There's no mother nature. These are punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a nation that does tatfif. And this is, if you look at the ahadith, the Bab al right? The chapter of the consequences or the punishments of Allah in this dunya for corruption of the people. Allah Azza wa speaks about this in Surah Al Rum. He says, "Zahar al fasadu fil barri wal bahr bima kasabat aydin nas." That corruption manifested in the land and in the ocean because of what people earned with their own hands. So this little bit of cheating in business, and what does Allah, what does Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, inform us of? The rain stops coming, drought comes. Produce doesn't get produced, you know, the honeybees disappear, <laughs> right? These kinds of things start happening when people cheat a little bit in their business. So one wonders, what does Wall Street have to do with the farm out in, you know, out in the deep south? They're connected. They're connected. This is one problem for one nation. When they do this, the other calamities come into play, subhanAllah. Some of the ulama, like a sabuni comment, at-tankir li-tahweel wa tafkheem. This is very important. You know, in the beginning we say, waylun, there's a tanween on it. We don't say al-waylu, right? Wailun here means, it's, it's one purpose of it is to horrify. Horrible destruction is for these people. Horrible destruction is for these people. And to magnify that this is not any small destruction. الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ The next ayah. These mutaffifin, these people who cheat just a little in business, how do they cheat? When they, when they receive weight from people, you know they go to the grocery store and they're going to get you know, two pounds of rice or ten pounds of wheat or whatever. They're going to get the full amount they can get. Iktala. Iktala to receive weight from someone. To receive the product based on a certain weight. But the thing here, in Arabic, when we say iktala, we say iktala min. We don't say iktala ala. This is the norm. In the Arabic we say, he received weight from this person. Not against this person. The way it's used here is against. This ala is really, really important. It has many rhetorical functions. In, under normal circumstances, you go to the store, you put the, whatever product it is, you put it on the scale, it weighs out, and then you pay the person. This is a normal transaction. But iktala ala nas, this actually it means tasallut, number one. You go to the guy you're buying from, and you're bullying him. No, I want more. No, you didn't weigh it correctly. You're kind of, you're, you're, you're muscling him to give you more. Even though it, he weighed it correctly, you say, no, you didn't weigh it correctly. Give me more. This is ala nas. This, this person is getting more than they deserve actually. And they're, they're, they're bullying themselves into getting more. So we find what's said, فِي الْأَصْلِ يُقَالْ إِكْتَالَ مِنْ وَلَا يُقَالْ إِكْتَالَ عَلَىٰ وَقَدْ عَدَّى فَعْلِ إِكْتَالَ فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةَ بِحَرْفْ عَلَىٰ لِلْدَّلَالَ عَلَىٰ التَّصَلُّتْ لِأَنَّهَا أُولَاءِ الْمُطَفِّفِينَ لَمْ يَكْتَالُوا مِنَ النَّاسِ بَلْ تَصَلَّتُوا عَلَيْهِمْ بِالْإِكْتِيَالِ the word min would have been there. So this is not a normal behavior, even in receiving. 
These are bullies even in getting the product. And you know, sometimes we do this. Nowadays we think, we don't weigh things anymore. I don't buy wheat and grain from the farm. And we don't have these problems anymore. You could do this on an 800 number. <laughs> Right? You know, you, uh, the, the people, they made a mistake or whatever, and you're yelling at them, no, I'm on eight months of free service, and you're going to throw this into and that into, and you know you don't deserve it, but you're going to use your muscle because you learned to do this at, at your job, or you saw other people do it, so you want to get these free advantages thrown in, and you're going to get that guy fired who's on the other phone. The guy's just got a job picking up the number from the 800 line, right? And who's your manager? I want to talk to him about ca bad customer service. So you, you're, you're muscling your way to get things. Right? And sometimes it's necessary, but other times you know. You're, you can ask your own conscience when you're doing it unfairly. Right? So, iqtala ala nas Alladheena idha iqtalu ala nas yastawfun. This is a very, it's a, just an awesome word that Allah depicts here, subhanAllah. You know, yutawaffawna, if the word was yutawaffawna, they are given in full. Whenever they take the measure, they are given in full whatever they wanted. But yastawfun, they try to get the full. And what this implies is not necessarily that they get the full, they have this attitude of, no, 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 more, 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 more. So they're very, you know, uh, shrewd kinds of customers. This, is, this ayah is not about being business people, this is being about the customer. They're getting more than they deserve. But the next ayah, وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ And when they have to weigh for others, and when they have to, you know, measure the product, give it specific weight for other people, يُخْسِرُونَ They make sure that the other person leaves in loss. You know, khasira, to have loss, to be lost. Akhsara, to give other, to make somebody else lose out, to make somebody else miss out. Not give him what he deserves. I want to make sure I give him less than what he deserves. I want to make sure I get away with maybe 10%, 5%, 2%, 0.1%, but I will not feel complete until I cheat him out of at least something. At least I take something away from him that he was expecting from me. These are yukhsirun. They make sure that the other falls into loss. But the other thing here, again, beautiful in the language, Normally in Arabic we would have found وَإِذَا كَالُوا لَهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوا لَهُمْ There would have been a harf jar here. If they weighed for their customers, for them, or they, belt, you know, they put it on the scale for them, the lamb would have been here. The missing lamb actually in, 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 let, lets us know, it indicates also that this transaction is not tabi'i, it's not a natural transaction. They're cheating the people out of some product just like the lamb has been removed. The lamb is missing, just like the full product is missing. This is a rhetorical function of the language. Subhanallah. So, إِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ Now these people, Allah is not just here talking about a business person. And He's not just talking about these shrewd people who get their way, or muscle their way when dealing with others. Something else is going on here. You know Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not reflect deeply on the Qur'an? The word tadabbur actually means also to look behind something. It comes from dubr. To look behind. What is behind this person's character? This person's acting this way, but what's the root cause? What is it, what, what makes him this way that he can cheat like this and deal with people in this way and not flinch? You know, when you, when you deal with person, a person who's normally not like this, they're not shrewd like this, when they muscle their way with somebody, they feel uncomfortable. Many of you may be like that. If you have to haggle a price, you feel kind of not normal. And you know, you're, you bring your cousin in to haggle the prices, right? You can't do it yourself. Because you don't have that kind of personality, but he does. He can get you like, he'll throw in a few extras in there, right, when he's, when he's dealing. Or when your customer is, you know, waiting for the product, you don't know how to talk to them. You just know how to do the job. You get somebody who's a little more shrewd, who can yell and scream on the phone. They can do it for you. But what kind of person does this? What kind of person develops this, this attitude? The next ayah lets us know. Have those people that do this, by distancing themselves, Allah has distanced Himself from these people. Allah doesn't even talk to them, He talks about them as those people. Not even whom, ulaik, oh way far out. Those people, haven't, have they never even fathomed, has it never even crossed their imagination that they're going to be raised? That they're going to be raised? Now what does that have to do with, you know, business? You see, these people, the first time they cheat in business, they're a little bit nervous. The first time they do it, uh, I'm not so sure, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe they're filing taxes incorrectly as an accountant for somebody. And they're kind of nervous when they file the papers. The second time they do it, they're a little less nervous when they get away. And over time, they become experts at beating the system, right? They get around the law and they, they know exactly what to do. Not only do they know what to do, they can teach others how to beat the system too. So they become very confident. And their confidence comes from the fact that they will never have to stand before the law. They've already learned how to beat the system. That's where their confidence comes from. 
They become very, you know, ex- you, know, uh, ca- you know, outgoing even. They become proud of their, their illegal behavior when they don't get caught for a long time because they figure at this point they're above the system. They can get away. And you know, a lot of criminals in our time, they get caught after they feel like they're above the law and they get a little careless. And then they get, you know, under, this, under the radar, they come and they get caught. So now Allah says the, the idea that they are going to be raised, of course, raised before Allah. Right, brought back to life and made to stand before Allah. This has never even crossed their mind. Dhan, assumption. Even that assumption haven't crossed, hasn't crossed their mind. And this word, ba'atha, is a portion of the word we learned in the previous surah. When we learned, وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ Ba'atha and athara together make بُعْثِرَتْ So a portion of the word from the previous surah is used to illustrate even a little bit of that thought doesn't even occur to them. This idea that they have to stand for what they did They've completely blocked their minds from it. They've completely blocked their minds from it. لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ They will be raised for an enormous day. Now, the th- something about the word عَظِيمٍ that I may, ha- may or may not have shared with you before. عَظِيمٍ commonly gets translated as great. But it comes from the Arabic word عَظَم or the plural عِظَام which is the plural of عَظِيم and عَظَم. عَظَم means a bone. You know, a bone is called عَظَم because it's tough, it's stiff, it's difficult to break. Right? It's, it's the... The animal's bone hits you, then you get injured. If it doesn't, if some other part hits you, you might be all right. So now, adham, that's from, the, from which the word greatness comes. So it's not just great, it's tough, it's intense. It's, you know, coming into contact with it will cause you pain. This is adhim. This is tough, you know, intense day. So they don't realize that this tough day is coming against them. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ In the previous surah, by the way, before we go on, Allah says, don't they have any fathom that they're going to have a great day where they have to stand? Did Allah tell us anything about that great day in the previous surah? إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فطرت وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَثَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ When the sky, you know, it's, it's ripped open and the stars are falling apart. They're like, they're like a sheet that, would, that had pearls on it and you, you, know, you, you, know, you give a little bit of a jerk to the sheet and they all fall apart. Right? And the oceans are going wild and the graves are being turned over and whatever their contents are are being brought out. The greatness of that day has already been illustrated. But despite hearing this message, it's like, yeah, it does, hasn't even crossed their mind. So, لِيَوْمٍ عظيم. It's been given a separate ayah to think that even after hearing about that great day that Allah called an nabaul azim in, you know, in Surah An-Naba, still after hearing these powerful ayat, nothing. No, nothing processes. And as we continue in this surah, we will see why nothing registers in their mind. Why is it that they hear this powerful message, but there's no effect? يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ In the previous surah, we learned, عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Every person will know what they invested in, what they sent forward, what opportunities they left behind. We talked about that at length last time. Here, another depiction, another wording of the same scene. The day on which people will stand before the Lord of all of the worlds. And alameen is for the wil the people of intellect. Meaning all of the nations, all of the peoples, their Lord. In other words, the Lord of the criminals, the cheaters, and their customers. The criminals and their client base. And whoever they were the clients of. They, all of them will be standing together. So they're not going to get away with even the smallest amount of cheating. Kalla, not at all. Meaning, this attitude is not going to save them at all. This is kalla. Kalla is this, the, the idea that they are not going to be raised. You, they think because they have this idea and they've become very confident about the way they behave in this world, this in itself is enough to, for them to be saved. You know, one of, the, one of the flaws of human beings, when they sin in, you know, incredibly, you know, they, they, they have no bounds in sin, one of the things that happens to them is they block the idea of consequence and just because you've blocked it, does it mean there's no danger there? No, that's, that's not enough. Pretending there's no danger is not enough that there's no danger. So Allah says, Kalla. No, no, no. Not at all. This assumption alone is not enough to save you. You could feel safe all you want. You could feel safe all you want, but the danger still remains. He says, Inna kitab al fujari lafi sijjin. This is absolutely remarkable. To understand this in proper context, let's look at something we read in the previous surah. We've been, uh, you noticed in these surahs that we've been studying, there has been mention of angels in one way or the other in every surah, right? And they complement each other. In the previous surah, we learned about the angels that are here. Inna alaykum la hafidin, kiraman katibin, ya'lamuna ma taf'alun. These guarding angels are here. They're noble, so they're not going to cheat in what they write. 
they're going to be noble, they're going to show their nobility in documentation, and, and they're constantly writing, katibin. and what are they writing? يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ They know what you're up to, they know everything that you're doing, and they're, they're continuously documenting. So the, the documentation part of it was highlighted in the previous. Documentation of what? Whatever we do. Everything that we do. But there's another part, and this is so much easier for me to explain and understand even, because I come from a tech background. <laughs> you know there's the data entry. Right, you're entering the data. And you have to get a reliable person to enter the data. Because if they make mistakes, then you'll, you know, the email that you send, or the fax that you send, or the, the contract that you send, if it has mistakes, then you're going to have problems. So first of all, who's entering the data of our deeds? The angels. They're entering the data. So there's any room for mistake? No. But then there's another problem. In business and in transactions and in worldly affairs, not only do you have to get reliable people to document, you also have to save your documents. You know the idea of backup servers nowadays, right? And make sure that your data is saved and all the registers and the accounts and the names and contacts of your customers and what date, what product has to ship and everything has to be saved. And if your data is gone, that's far worse than your money being gone because this, this is everything. This is everything. So the previous surah illustrated the, the recording of the information. But this surah is going to tell us how that recording is saved. Where is it archived? And you know if the archive is not safe, then what's the point of even having reliable data entry? You understand? So now look. Kalla inna kitab al fujjar. No, no, no. There's no doubt. The book, the book of the vicious criminals. Al fujjar, this is from fajr. Like fajr rips through the night. That's fajr, right? A fajr is someone who, who disobeys Allah in the most vicious Vicious way. They don't feel bad about it, they're proud of it. And they do the worst, most heinous kinds of crimes. And of course they do it because what you're going to do about it? They have this attitude of, you know, who, who saw me do it? Who's going to come and attack me about it? Who's going to come back to haunt me about What's, what's going to come back to haunt me about this? So this attitude, Allah Azza wa says, you could be a fajr, but everything you do has been documented and it's been actually turned into a kitab al-fujjar, a book of these vicious criminals. This is like a register, a roster. And the way that some ulama comment about this is, you know, uh, in the olden days there used to be dungeons, right, underneath. And these were the prisons for the criminals. And before you enter into the, the cells themselves, there's the, the gatekeeper, and there's this, this office almost. And the office has a roster of people that are inside. And it tells them, okay, this guy is in for this many years, and he has to be in this cell, and... These are the punishments written for him, and this is when he has to go in, this is when he has to come out, etc., etc. This is this whole roster of the criminals. Where is this roster kept? It's kept right outside the prison. So if somebody says, my time is up, I got to go, where does the, the, the warden, where does he check? He checks inside that roster. That's the image that some of the Salaf give of this book. That this, some of the, them commented, this is in the depths of the earth, where the, the, the souls of the criminals are kept. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. But we know that it's kept, this, this roster is that of the criminals and all of the things that they have done. So the sinful soul, when it leaves this earth, and, you know, it goes to the, this roster and we find what is it that it's, what, is, what are the crimes that it has committed. And now where is this roster? Lafi sijin. There is no doubt about it, it is in its as-sijin. Now sijin in Arabic means prison. Sijin, horrible prison. And some have argued that this is actually a particular name of this location. But because of its origin, we know the nature of that location is like a prison. And this is like the, ro the warden's documents of this prison, who is going to be inside and one, what punishments they have to suffer, suffer. Just so you understand the intricacy of this roster, this Kitab al-Fujjar, what's inside it. We find a little bit of detail about it here and there in the Qur'an. Like, for, for example, in Surah Al-Kahf, we find... مَالِ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ What's wrong with this book? لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا It didn't leave out anything small, anything big, except that it recorded it. There's not a small thing I did. There's not one ounce of cheating. There's not one pound of flesh. There's not one minute of leaving work early or whatever it was. Nothing has been left out. Everything has been thoroughly documented. So, لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا Now Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سجين. You know, in the previous surah, we found, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ What is going to give you a clue what the day of judgment, what the day of decision making is? What the day is when everybody gets their portion? Somebody who has at least some sense of justice will be shaken by those words. 
But far worse, now you're talking to the criminal. You know, the day of judgment, everybody will be worried. But then the worst criminal, you have to tell him, you know, not just about the, the court, you know what you scare him of? You scare him of the prison. So the previous surah was like, do you know what that court is going to be like? When you have to stand trial and the judge will be there and the evidence will be presented, it was like that, that scene. But the worst, if the criminal is not scared of court, what are they, what's going to scare them beyond the court? It's the prison itself. So, Ahmad Raka Masjid you have any clue what this prison is? What this sijin is, where this record is kept? Allah says, Kitabun Marqum, subhanAllah. This is again the protection of the data. Allah says it is documented, it is, it is a writ, it's something that is presented in writing, kitab. And we know how it was written. Who was writing it? In the previous surah, Kiram and Katibin. They were writing it. So they've actually documented the whole thing. But then Allah gives it an adjective. He says, Marqum. Marqum in Arabic means to write something in thick, clear writing. And to imprint it so it cannot be erased. This is also done when you stitch, you know, embroidery onto clothes. You can't rub it and wash it off. It's done. It's on there. Right? So that's also called raqam actually. Marqum here implies that not only will this data be entered accurately, it will be clear and it's not something that can be erased. It can't be erased. It's, it's, it's you know, protected data. So we find, for example, a sabuni commenting, maktub wun kar raqam fi thawb la yunsa wa la yumha. Right? He says it's, 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 it's imprinted, it's written, just like stitching or embroidery, embroidery on cloth, it will not be forgotten, it will not be erased. This is the nature of you know, the word kitab al marqum. Meaning you think you forgot what you did. Everybody forgot, no big deal, nobody, held, nobody took me to court for it. Nobody held it against me. It's, you're making a big deal out of nothing. Well, you, think, you can think it's nothing all you want. Kitab al marqum. It's there. It's the, the data has been sent. And you know that it's been sent. So you could feel good about it. You can make others feel good about it. But that doesn't take away that it's been documented. Subhanallah. وَيْلُوِ يَوْمَ إِذِلِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Ultimate destruction on that day for those who lie. And you'll find three, three ayat about lying. الَّذِينَ يُكَذِّبُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ وَمَا يُكَذِّبُ بِهِ إِلَّا كُلُّ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ Three times. You can, you know, الْمُكَذِّبِينَ يُكَذِّبُونَ يُكَذِّبُونَ Three times over. So the root cause of the people who cheat in business. That was how it began. وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ But here Allah says, وَيْلُ يَوْمَ إِذِلْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Ultimate destruction, the most horrible destruction, especially on that day, will fall upon those who deliberately lied against. And Allah did not say what they lied against. He didn't put the, the uh, object in front of it. So when you say, I lied against, that's not a complete sentence. You're expecting, what did you lie against? Now if you say, I lied, that's enough of a sentence. That's enough, right? But it's actually intransitive. In grammar, we call it intransitive. Like you say, I walked. It's a complete sentence. I lied. It's a complete sentence. But when I say, I lied against, then the listener is expecting, well, who did you lie against? What did you lie about? What was your crime of lying for? So now the next ayah, it opens the door to this. الَّذِينَ يُكَذِّبُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ Those who lied against the day of judgment. In the previous surah, we found without the word yawm. كَلَّا بَلْ تُكَذِّبُونَ بِالدِّينَ You're lying against the deen itself. You don't, you don't like the idea of judgment. You don't like the idea of someone you know, holding you accountable for the things you've done. But in reality, you've been reminded of this enormous day over and over and over again. How many times have we heard the reminder in these few weeks about the akhirah? What are you, what's the core problem? Why, you know, what Allah repeats the most is what is denied the most. When Allah repeats taqwa more than anything else in the Qur'an, it's because what people lose the most is what? It's taqwa. When Allah repeats the reminder of the hereafter in one way, then another way, then another way, the oceans will boil over, then the oceans will go wild, then the mountains will be like carded wool, then the mountains are going to sail. He says the same thing over and over and over again. Why? Because this is the thing people tend to overlook and not, not concern themselves. No, 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 this is, yeah, I don't want to hear about the akhirah, I already believe in the akhirah, thanks. Can we go to another chapter? Can we talk about something else? It is this that hasn't been imprinted into your mind, into your heart. That is the reason of this tatfif al-mizan. This is the reason. So uh, Allah says, "Alladina yukadibuna biyomidin." Those who lie against the day of, literally of judgment of the due portion being given. Then He gives a further explanation. Wama yukadibu bihi, and there's no one at all in existence who would lie against that, except a certain kind of person. Illa. So this is where we have to pay attention. 
what kind of a person is not able to internalize the awesome reality of the Day of Judgment? What kind of person is it? Two adjectives have been given. Mu'tadin, Athim. We have to understand both of these terms. I'tada in the Arabic language. It means to violate somebody else's rights or to cross the limits. So you wrong somebody, then you have become a mu'tad. You've become a mu'tad. When you wrong somebody, like we said, the first time, maybe you feel bad. The second time, it's a little easier for you. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it's second nature. Then not only is it easy for you, you're proud of it on top of that. And you find worse ways of becoming a mu'tad, of wronging the people. This is how you know, tyrants are created on this earth, whether they rule countries or, they rule, or they, they're in charge of a household or they run a business, or they have employees, or they're a sibling, or they're a bully. In any way, shape, or form, this is a mu'tad, the one who crosses the limits. Then we find the word athim, which comes from ithim. Ithim in its original form means, you know, it's commonly translated as sin, but the Qur'an has about a dozen words used for sin. So it's very particular what ithim means. Ithim is a kind of, you know, attitude and a behavior that keeps you from doing good things. So on the one hand, the mu'tad is a guy that's doing bad things. And Athim makes him a guy that keeps him from doing good things. You know, there's a kind of person that does bad things and also does good things. Right? They, they're messed up in this, but at least they do that much. Right? Some other good. But he is mu'tad on one hand and Athim on the other. He's, he's the worst of the worst. These are the worst of the worst that can absolutely deny, without the blink of an eye, deny the existence of judgment. They will hear these words and they will laugh at them. Nothing will go on in their... You won't see a bulge on their forehead. Why not? Because they've attained these two attributes over time. They've become mu'tad on the one hand, a theme on the other. The Ahlul Lugha, the people of language, they comment that ithim is primarily an issue of the heart. It's a psychological thing. That your heart doesn't feel inclined at all, actually becomes uncomfortable in doing anything good. Which is why we find in the Qur'an, فَإِنَّهُ آثِمٌ قَلْبُهُ that his heart has become athim. His heart has become one that, is, that deters doing good. It's become sinful in that sense. We find a beautiful hadith in this connection about ithim. Al-birru matma'annat ilayhi nafs wal ithmu ma haka fi sadrik. I found this hadith in Anwar al-Bayan fi Halli Lughat al-Qur'an, which is a, a book on the grammatical analysis of the Qur'an. He's, uh, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, righteousness or goodness is what will satisfy your nafs. It will give you tranquility. Itma'annat bihi nafs. And... The, the sin, ithm, this holding back from good, is what will eat away at you. Meaning, it will eat away at you in the beginning, until you reach the point where you're no longer athim, but you are athim. You see the ya in the word athim? That means this guy is stuck in that state. It's not like he did it once or twice. This has become a personality trait for this person. Every chance he gets, he violates somebody else's rights. Every chance he gets, every opportunity he gets to do good, he pushes it away. This is actually the worst case scenario of bima qaddama wa akhara. You know in the previous surah we read alimat nafsun ma qaddamat wa akharat. Every person knows what they sent forward what they left behind. The worst case scenario everything he sends forward is an e- is an evil. Is a violation of somebody's rights. And every good opportunity he, that comes to him to do something good with himself, he leaves it behind. He doesn't touch it. So this is actually the worst case scenario of the previous. Inshallah ta'ala we go forward uh, before we do actually a couple of things here What we read in the previous surah has been mentioned in other places This conscience of the human being Of him losing his natural predisposition towards doing good And not violating other, others' rights In the beginning we find بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بصيرة. No, The human being is in full view of himself He knows what he's up to He knows what he's doing even if he makes lots of excuses, he presents all of them like, you know, I have this reason or that reason for doing whatever I'm doing. But now, so we've established that we're talking about these pujar, these worst kinds of sinners. Look at their response to the ayat of Qur'an. When these ayat come, they're talking to him about what he's doing. They're very direct. I mean, these ayat for us, you know, we could say these are a millennium and a half old. They were talking to the Arabs of that time. When you listen to their message, doesn't it rattle you? Man, this is happening at my office. This is what I'm doing at my business. I better tell my dad to stop. I, don't, I better tell my uncle to not do this anymore. I've noticed when I was working for him that these things, the tafif al-mizan was going on. You start thinking, these, these ayat come to life about what's happening here. But the one who has gone past this point of return, إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ when our ayat, when our miraculous signs are re- recited onto him, can, tutla, not tuliyat even, tutla, over and over again. 
Over and over again, the ayat are recited on to him. What does he respond with? Asatir al awwalin First of all, tala. You understand something about the word tilawa, which is used here. It, it comes with two, uh, it's, it has masdarin, talwan wa tilawatan. Talwan means to follow someone, right behind them, like tailgating nowadays. Right? That would be talayatlu. Also means to read. So it has two meanings, reading and following. So the ayat are read onto them, and literally the message follows them. Right? And they, whenever they hear it, Asatir al awwalin They say, now what's their response? Let's understand something about the word Asatir. It comes from three singulars. It has three singulars. Istar, Asaitara, and Astura. These are all acceptable singular forms of Asatir. And it comes from the original word Satr, which is lines. The connection here is in the olden times, you had these legends of old times, like myth or mythology, right? old stories. And somebody was really good at telling this story and the kids really enjoyed it. Right? So they would write it down. They would put it in lines. And this is how the legend would be passed on. Everybody knew this has nothing to do with the truth. This is just something that's passed on through generations. So when he heard Quran, he said, these are legends of old times. These are stories. What? Angels on my shoulders. And you know this nation was destroyed and that nation was destroyed. And I'm going to be raised back to life again. Come on. These are just stories. You know, I grow up. So basically, their attitude is one of of first of all being condescending towards the ayat of Allah and of literally calling, talking to the one who's giving these ayat making them seem like fools come on, what are you talking about? this is what we say nowadays what you would say you know, 1400 years ago is asatir al what nonsense? what is this myth you, you keep bringing up? asatir al so this is the first thing that makes him fajr really the ultimate, the worst crime he's done so far is poke fun at the ayat of Allah somebody's a criminal, that's one thing but they reach that, you know, a state of being criminal to the point where you try to correct them and with the best possible correction, the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their response is, get lost. This is nonsense. Asatiru al Kalla. Then Allah explains, why did they reach this state? You see, He keeps giving us reasons of why was taqthif? There was taqthib yawm al-deen. There was lying against the day of resurrection. Now He lies against, He pokes fun at the ayat, criticizes them, insults the ayat of Qur'an. Why does he do this? Kalla, not at all. He's not doing this for genuine reason. What is it that, that happens in response? Barrana ala qulubihim. Rather, we place a rust on their hearts. Rana ala qulubihim. At-taba' wa danas. The Lisan al Arab ibn Mandur says it's an imprint and it's, it's filth that covers the heart. This is Rana ala qulubihim. We find Hassan radiallahu anhu saying, huwa dham ala dham. It is sin after sin after sin until the heart becomes completely black. We find a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. We find this in Al-Bukhari in which the messenger says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam su'ila an qawlihi ta'ala kalla barrana ala qulubihim He was asked about this ayah. Qal, he said huwa al-abdu yadnib al-dhamb fatunkatu fi qalbihi nukta sawda فَإِنْ تَابَ مِنْهَا سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ وَإِنْ عَادَ نُكِتَتْ أُخْرَى حَتَّى يَسْوَدَّ الْقَلْبُ You know, this is a person who does a sin and their heart gets a spot on it, like a blemish on it, right? Which is what Danas, the language scholars called it Danas, a spot. And then if he repents and he goes back, then it's scrubbed off, it's washed off. Literally, it's made polished again, given a shine, the heart's given a shine, according to the wording of the hadith. But if he doesn't, if he continues another spot and another spot and another spot until the entire heart becomes hard. Entire heart becomes black. Black with filth and rust. And this is the state that is described in the ayah. Rana ala qulubihim. And why did, what, what caused this, this filth on their heart? What is it that rusted over them? Ma kanu yaksibun. Whatever they used to earn is what made the rust occur on top of their hearts. Whatever these sins were. And have we learned in this surah already what they used to earn? Just a little tiny bit of profit. They weren't making millions necessarily. They were being cheap over a buck or two. They were cheap, being cheap over a minute or two. Or a day or two of service. Something small. But they want to get more than they deserve. And they want to get le- give less than what people deserve of them. Subhanallah. Kalla innahum ar rabbihim yawma idhin By the way, before I go on, just something that ties this to the previous surah. You know, in the previous surah we read, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. Allah asked a very powerful question. Human, oh human being, what is it that deluded you? 
What took you away from your noble Lord, from your gracious Lord? Now we learn in this surah, what took him away? His stiff heart. This is the worst thing that can take you away from your noble Lord. So Allah asked the rhetorical question in the previous surah, and we have this scary response in this surah. Subhanallah. It is these people that when it, especially when it comes to their Lord, they are going to be barricaded, they're going to be blocked off. Meaning they won't be able to see their Lord on that day. On that day, especially their Lord, they will not be able to see, there will be a hijab. You know the word hijab? A barrier. That which comes in between you and whatever you want to see, so that you can no longer see it. You can no long, it's no longer in your sight. That's what hijab is, literally what hijab means. So here, when Allah Azza wa says, on that day, they will be permanently barricaded, you know, blocked off from the view of their Lord. The wording is interesting in that there's ikhtisas. ar is first. It is their Lord that they won't be able to see. It is their Lord that they'll be barricaded away from. And what that implies is there's something else that they will be looking at. And not only looking at, they can't stop looking at it. You remember in the previous surah, وَمَا هُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ they will not be able to steal even a glimpse away from that hellfire that is staring at them. They can't hide behind a beam and take a breath and say, okay, back, for, back to the punishment. No, not even a blink. They're stuck. Their eyes are stuck on that punishment. And here, they'll be staring at that, but what won't they even get a glimpse of? Their Lord. It's a contrast from what we found in the previous surah. وَمَا هُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ Ash-Shafi'i rahimahullah said something very important in this ayah. وَفِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَرَوْنَهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَقَالَ مَالِكْ لَمَّا حُجِبَ أَعْدَاؤُهُ لَمْ يَرَوْهُ تَجَلَّى لِأَوْلِيَائِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَرَوْهُ حَتَّى رَأَوْهُ Ash-Shafi'i rahimahullah comments, this ayah is a proof that the believers will in fact see their Lord. This ayah is a proof that the believers will in fact see their Lord. And then Malik rahimahullah, he commented, when the, when the enemies, when Allah's enemies are barricaded away, when they're blocked off from seeing Him, then He will show His glory, His full glory to the believers until they get to see Him, subhanAllah. So this, this ayah at the same time is a punishment on the kuffar and is a gift to the believers. ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ Thereafter, and you know, you see all these horrible punishments, the worst of the punishments being described after the one crime. You know, the, Allah mentioned different crimes. But when did the discourse on, the, on the, the punishments begin? The worst of these punishments was the sealing off of the heart. Everything is a result of that. But what sealed the heart? What caused that curse to fall upon them? They poked fun at what? The ayat of Allah. They poked fun at the ayat. They made ridicule of the ayat. They called them asatir al-awwaleen. They, were con- they had this arrogant attitude towards the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that resulted in this one after the other after the other. First the heart gets rusty. Then they don't even get to see their Lord. Then on top of this, ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ Then they will be jumping into, casting themselves into the, the blazing flame. We talked about the original meanings of al-jahim before. يَصْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ الدِّينِ In the previous surah. Here, لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ يَصْلَوْنَهَا أَيْ فِي الْجَحِيمِ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ They will be throwing themselves there again. But here the wording is stronger because salu is ism fa'il. It's an ism. In the previous surah we had yaslawna which was a verb. And the verb is weaker than the noun. And since this context is stronger, the stronger word is used. Lasalu al-jahim. This idafa is given to it. Instead of having a fi'il and a maf'ul bihi. But then just the wording of the, the, these ayat is so powerful. Subhanallah. Thumma yuqalu. Then it will be said. Allah doesn't say, then Allah will say to them. He says then it will be said. Now what's the difference between he said and it will be said? When I say it will be said, I didn't mention who's talking. I didn't mention who's talking. This is called in Arabic, al-fi'il alladhi lam yusamma fa'iluhu. Right? Al-mabni ala al-majhul, the passive in English. The passive. Like when I say he was killed, I don't know who killed him. Right? Why, is that, why did Allah say it will be said to them? Allah did not say Allah will say to them. Because in the previous ayat, had Allah not barricaded himself from them? He's barricaded himself, and now in this ayah, Allah is barricading his voice from them. He's not even talking to them directly. Yuqalu, it will be said to them. Subhanallah. Yuqalu, hadha alladhi kuntum bihi tukadhibun. This is what you used to lie against. This is the very thing. Hadha alladhi. This is the very thing that you had been lying against all along. This is what they're going to be told as they are jumping into the fire. This is what you were poking fun at, remember? This is what you found funny. This is when somebody reminded you of, you said, I don't need to hear this mythology. You remember that? This is what that is. 
They're being told over and over again, subhanAllah. ثُمَّ يُقَالْ هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ You know, in the previous surah, there was still hope. This scene is not of dunya. This scene is of what? Akhirah. In the previous surah, there was a scene of dunya. كَلَّا بَلْ تُكَذِّبُونَ بِالدِّينَ No, no, you're lying against the deen right now in dunya. Change your ways. You're, you've been doing this all along. No, there's, there's guardian angels over here that are writing, not the guardian angels of the Christians. These guardians are guarding the things you do. They're archiving them. حَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا katibin. Change your ways. But if you refuse to change your ways, if you're like these fujjar, the worst kinds of criminals, then the only thing left for you is the news. You can poke fun at it now. You're going to be thrown and you're going to be told, remember we said, don't do this? <laughs> remember the thing you're, you, you were told not to lie against? هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ Then Allah Azza wa switches and he, he changes the scene. And He takes us to the scene of the believers. And this, subhanAllah, is a contrast from the previous surah. In the previous surah we read, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Certainly the righteous are going to be surrounded or immersed in bliss, in ni'mah, in constant blessing. What that implies according to the imagery of az zamakhshari for example, even is, wherever they look, they'll see something that makes them happy. You know, you're, you go to a new town or something, you're looking around, then you see this monument, you say, oh, look at that. <laughs> right? That's one thing that caught your attention. Not everything, one thing. But fi na'im. They're in it, and everything around them is something awesome. They look at that, somebody else is looking at that, and says, look at that. You know, you're, the, the one next to you in Jannah says, hey, look at that. And you say, no, 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 you look at that. <laughs> and then you switch scenes, you're staring at the other thing. You're surrounded by amazing things. La fi na'im. So here we find more detail about the righteous. In the previous surah, we found more detail about the criminals. So there we found, you know, وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٍ يَصْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ الدِّينَ وَمَاهُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ We found two ayat detailing what we get about the, the fujjar, the worst criminals. Here we find six ayat, three times the number of ayat just dedicated to the people of Jannah, just dedicated to what's going to happen with them. But it begins with their record. The record of the criminals was where? You remember? That roster, that, that register in that prison, في سجين. But now look what's going to happen to the record of the believers. Kalla, not at all. You know, and this not at all is again in response to those who poke ridicule. They make fun of the believers because they talk about, you know, these amazing things that are going to happen, these fantasies that they live with, that they're going to be punished and this, all, the, all of this is going to happen. Not at all. Inna kitab al-abrar lafi illiyin. The book of the righteous, and abrar again, jam'u qilla, right? This is the minimal plural because the righteous will be few. May Allah make us from them. Their record will be, the, their book is going to be in the Illiyin. And Illiyin has been interpreted in a number of ways. I'm going to share a few things with you. First, it comes from Ulu, which means height. And Illiyin has an Ina at the end, and also in the next ayah, Una at the end, which, which is called Jam' Mudakkar Salim, which is used, Dhawil Uqul, in the people that, the creatures that have intellect. What this implies is this book will be in the company of the highest. This book, one of the implications of that is, this book is in the company of the highest. And we know the higher the angels are, the more noble, the more responsible they are. You know, in, in, in regards to the Qur'an itself, we write about angels that are up there, right? بِأَيْدِي سَفَرَةٍ كِرَامٍ barara. We've read that already. But this is another set of angels that are high, and what are they protecting? This is, they're not protecting Qur'an here. This is a different group. This is a different kind of angels. They are responsible to guard over the book of the righteous. The book that, according to the ulama, has two things. First of all, about the Illiyin, let's see what As-Sabuni says, Rahimahullah. وَهُوَ مَكَانٌ عَالٍ مُشَرَّفْ فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ This is a very high place. It is noble and honored and dignified in the highest part of Jannah. This is in the highest part of Jannah. That's the name of it. So, so that's one opinion that it's from the highest place in Jannah. Others say it refers directly to the angels. Zamakhshari says it could refer to both at the same time, angels and high stations. It is also, call, some ulama also comment, in addition to those two things, the book itself is called Illiyin. The book itself is called Illiyin, that this is its uh, ism jamid. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Uh, so now, let's get an idea of this high, high jannah where this record is. We find this interesting commentary, well, we'll come to it when the ayah comes actually. The soul of the believer, according to the, a great number of Mufsirun, the soul of the believer is taken up all these levels of par you know, these, these heavens until they reach underneath the arsh. And underneath the arsh in the Illiyin, they have this record. And this record states that these muqarrabin, these shuhada, for example, those who died in the path of Allah, their, their evil deeds, or their, rather their punishment, they're saved from it. 
It guarantees their punishment, they're safe. And it also guarantees their entrance into Jannah. But, and then they're brought back. So they see their record and they get a guarantee, yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're headed in the right place. So they see the contract before they're brought back into their grave. We know the shuhada go straight into the paradise, but this is referring to al-muqarrabun. Those are really close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are shown this roster even before the day of judgment. So we'll look at how that applies in this surah. وَمَا أَضْرَاكَ مَا عِلِّيُونَ what will give you any clue? What, will give, what can you look at around you that could possibly help you imagine? Idraq, you know, or Adra Yudri, to, to look around for clues to figure something out. You have nothing at your disposal that can give you any clue what Illiyun is, what this high place is, and how secure that record is, right? Yashhaduhu al Muqarrabun. These, the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be witness to them. Okay, two minutes. All right. All right, so let's just read a little bit of the, uh, the uh, tafsir that I, I made sure I wanted to, to read before you, inshallah, and we'll take a break. So, يَحْضُرُونَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ وَيَحْفَظُونَهُ لِأَنَّهُ يَحْمِلْ أَمَانًا لِصَاحِبِهِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَفَوْزِهِ بِالْجَنَّةِ First of all, these angels are, they, Allah says, they're, they're witness, the closest of them, they're witnessing this illiyin. They're witnessing this book, this document that has the deeds of the righteous. Basically, they're guarding it because it contains in them the security, the guarantee, the safe passage of these people that they will not be people of hellfire and that they will have success in the paradise. As-Sabuni comments, Ay kitabul abrar, kitabul musattar. He says, this is the book of the righteous, a book that is well documented. Maktubun fihi a'maluhum, that in it all of their deeds have been documented and written. Wa huwa fi illiyin, and it is in the illiyin, fi a'la darajat al jannah, it is in the highest levels of jannah. Yashhaduhu al muqarrabuna min al malaika. That the closest of the angels are witnessing it. They're constantly looking at it. It's constantly under surveillance, not by security cameras, but by the angels, subhanAllah. And they're, they're constantly ha- you know, watching over it. One of the comments that I found before we take a break, inshallah, in regards to this, the righteous person, the ruh of the righteous person goes all the way up. Who's already witnessing this book? The angels. Then this righteous person gets there and they're shown their portion. This is your roster. This is the guarantee you're not going to hellfire. This is the guarantee you'll be entered into Jannah. Then he goes back. You know, when he rises up on the day of judgment, are there other witnesses that, that have read that with him? Are there other witnesses that can support that? Yes, in fact, that was there on record. The other angels. And what does that give him even before the Day of Judgment? Peace. He's at rest. That I have a guarantee with Allah. And I have those who are testifying to this. Yashhaduhu al muqarrabun. The closest to Allah are bearing witness to this book. And then he is given the witness to it too. Some ulama comment, actually a good number of them, that the ruh of the mu'min gets to see it. And he is also included in al muqarrabun. May Allah make us from al muqarrabin We take a break at this point. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. To download more lectures, learn more about our project, and to help support it, visit www.bayyina.com slash dream. That's B-A-Y-Y-I-N-A-H slash dream. You are free to share these recordings with family and friends. Thank you and Jazakumullah Khairan for helping us make our dream a reality. على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد We left off at ayah number 22 إن الأبرار اللي في نعيم This is a repetition of an ayah that came exactly the same way in Surah Al-Infitar إن الأبرار اللي في نعيم It's the same exact ayah But there was another counter ayah in the previous surah which was إن ال... وإن الفجار اللي في جحيم So there was إن الأبرار اللي في نعيم about the righteous being in bliss and then there was the one about the vicious criminals being in the worst pits of hellfire and in, 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 in the jaheem in the beginning of the surah we found kalla inna kitab al-fujjari lafi sijjin the book of the record of the criminals is in as sijjin but allah did not make mention of the fujjar themselves and where they are in this surah but he repeated the mention of the people of paradise in this surah and he gave it a lot of detail in this surah There's two rhetorical reasons for that. The first is, we didn't learn much about the bliss of the people of paradise in the previous surah. So it's due that we learn more about that in this surah. So there's more detail given to us here. 
The second is we talked about the criminals being talked about in Al-Fitar, a worse degree of them being talked about here, Al-Fujjar. Right? We talked about them at the end of that surah, but here really from, from Al-Mutaffifin and on, these are the worst kinds of criminals. So there, I mean, if Allah just mentions that their records are down in that prison, it doesn't have to be even further elaborated where they're going to end up. Right? So Because that's already been declared. So Allah does not give them any more attention and any more uh, elaborate discourse. Now we find in this surah, when Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about these people and they're, they're surrounded in, in all kinds of comfort and softness, Allah mentions a few things that highlight the bliss of paradise. And that's something you should note about this surah. Allah talks about one or two particular things, and that should remind you of the larger picture. This is not the only thing in paradise that Allah is going to talk about subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a larger scene, but you should get a glimpse of it. Similarly, the things that the criminal does, they, they do a lot of things wrong. But one of them that was highlighted was their tatfif, al-mutafifin. One thing was highlighted, but it gives you the larger picture of who these criminals are and what their mindset is. So here again, we, we look at these few glimpses and scenes that are beautifully depicted in the paradise. May Allah enter us into them. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ They are going to be on these cushions. These, arika is the singular of araik. And it's a chair or a throne or a large couch that's full of cushions. So you can recline on it and relax. Okay. يَنْظُرُونَ They'll be looking around. Now the thing to notice, and some of the ulama talked about this in the imagery of this ayah also, is when you recline or you sit down and relax, then you can't look around so much because your view is limited, right? If you're on a train, for example, you'll recline, then you can't look out the window. What do you have to do? You get out, you know, you, you get out of your comfort zone, then you look around. You, don't, you can't sit back and look around. Even in the car, your kids are sitting back, they don't see it. They say, hey, did you see that cow? What did they do? They look up and they go to the window. You know, they come out of their comfortable position to see. Look at how Allah puts it. They will be reclined looking around. Meaning Allah has designed the chair in a way that when you sit back, you get the best view. Right? You're in the most comfortable position, subhanAllah. Yandurun, just looking around. Wherever they look, they see bliss. So they get a full view on, on these araik. This is even, it's very difficult for us to do in our car. <laughs> it takes us 25 minutes to adjust the chair exactly the way we should in the rear view mirror and all this stuff. Right? SubhanAllah. And you know, the other thing is, when, you, uh, when you're looking somewhere, your, your view is kind of focused to one thing. But where are they looking? Lafi na'im. The Na'im is where? They're in it and it's all around them. So they can see all around from this wonderful seating that Allah has provided them. Ta'rifu fi wujuhihim nadratan na'im. You will recognize in their faces nadra. Nadra is a beautiful word in the Arabic language. There are a few words for glow and glitter and joy that are used to, to express the beauty of something or freshness even. We find zahra, bahja, nadra. Nadra is the lighting up of one's face. When you, you could see the freshness in it, you could see the happiness and joy in it. You know, it's also used, nadra is used in Arabic literature for even vegetables and fruit that's really fresh and ripe. But in the Quran, essentially, it comes for faces. So, face, wujuhun yawma idhin nadira, right? They're, they're lit, they're fresh, they're just, just they're really happy to be there. You, do you ever see a tourist who's really happy to be in DC? I haven't seen one yet, but, you know, when, if you see one, that's what they would look like. <laughs> we see a lot of those in New York, you know, people get to the city and they're like, you know, there's just nadra on their face. You know where I see nadra? I see nadra. Sometimes uh, if I fly to LA, right, the plane, the Southwest flight stops in uh, Vegas, right? And the, the people that are getting off at Vegas, before they get off, guess what's on their face? Nadra. Man, they're happy. They, they're staring out the window. They're just like, like they just about to land into Jannah, right? And then the flight goes on from, from Vegas to LA, right? So the, now the people on the plane are the people that are leaving Vegas. And this looks like the you know the, the the line that's headed to the hellfire. Their faces are down, and they, you know they don't want to make eye contact. They look suicidal. Probably left all their life savings behind, right? So it's a different scene from here to there than there to there. Subhanallah. But that gives you some idea of nadra. You see these people sitting on couches, and they're just fresh. They're just they're lit. Their faces are lit. Ta'arifu fi wujuhim nadra and nadra tan naim. The 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 idafa here, the mudaf ilayh here is a naim. These blissful things that they see, that's what lights their face up. I mean, you see something, like, wow, and you see this other thing, and you, your face just gets brighter and brighter at the things you see, subhanAllah. Yusqawna, and now you know the, the, the uh, service, room service. Yusqawna, they will be given to drink. They don't even have to get up to get the drink. They don't have to get up, because if, you know, if they said yasquna, or, you know, they, then they're going to drink. 
but yusqawna, they will be given to drink. So they don't, Allah has already set the scene with the children on the couch. So they don't have to get up. <laughs> yusqawna, and what are they given to drink? Min rahiqin makhtum. Let's understand first what rahiq uh, means. Uh, As-Sabuni comments, ajwadul khamr wa asfahu. Uh, in, in the Sihah, we find, al-rahiq safwatul uh, khamr wa qala al-akhfash huwa al-sharab al-ladhi la ghashafi. So a few things. The purest possible wine or drink that is not contaminated by age or, or bubbles kind of thing. It's very pr- crystal clear. You can see right through it. And it's got great texture and, and color. And it doesn't make you drunk. It doesn't get you. You can drink how much, however much of you, it you like and it doesn't get you drunk. Others comment that it also has in it uh, a beautiful scent. But then we find makhtoum. And you know, I don't know how popular this the drinks that were makhtoum must, must have been a very exotic thing at the time. Nowadays, Makhtum literally means sealed off, closed off, tight. And it's got a brand on it. So once you open it, you know how like some drinks have that seal that you, if it's not, if it's not there, you shouldn't buy it kind of thing. right? So they've got that seal. It's an original seal meant for you to open it. It wasn't opened by anyone else before. It's filled to the brim. And makhtum also means something that is filled to the brim and then sealed. Like the Messenger وسلم, is khatam in nabiyin right? Because the Risala is filled. It's not like there's room left. It's filled. And then he's the seal. It's all the way to the top. So Ar-Rahiq Al-Makhtum is this, these beautiful wine bottles that, you know, as, as ugly as we think wine is today as believers, there's a different kind of wine that doesn't get us drunk that Allah is offering us in, and it's being given to us. But then Allah tells us something more about this, uh, this seal. And this is just remarkable. The depiction of Jannah in these ayat is just so remarkable. SubhanAllah. You have to understand the scene. We began with people that are the worst kinds of criminals. And who's talking about them? These ayat are, you know, there's a disagreement about their, them being Makki or Madani. And some have a narration about there were, th- that some of the Ansar used to cheat in business and that's why these ayat came. But that narration in and of itself is not very strong. And the language doesn't support it, number two. In that the language is talking about the worst kinds of Fujar. And these are not the Ansar. They're not, they were not even close to that, right? And also we learned that the Ansar and the people of Medina generally, they weren't business people first. They were, they were agriculture first. Who was in business more? Who was doing the cheating in business and this kind of, who, who would be an excer- expert at that? The Makkans, right? So this is why the majority really does uh, hold the position that this surah is Makki. But just, just go back to the Makkan sirah for a moment. You know, these, the Muslims, they're not in a position of power. They're not powerful. They're very weak. They're the, they're the object of ridicule. They're the crazy people. And here they are talking about the multi-million dollar corporations, the mutaffifin. They're pointing a finger at them and saying, you know, you do this, you know where it's going to land you? Into hell. Right? Right? We just recite these ayat, but remember, these ayat were memorized by the companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, and they were delivered to the people. They're just reciting it onto the people. And the people who are doing this business that are well off, when they hear that, you know what the first thing that comes to their mind is, who are you to tell me? You're the scum of, you're Bilal, you're, you're Suhaib, you're a foreigner, you're an immigrant. You're going to tell me about what's right and wrong? Mind your business, get lost. So they were the basically considered the annoying, you know, people you don't want to talk to. You know, like nowadays a homeless guy comes to you and talks to you, and says, I, I got to go. You avoid them. This is the attitude the kuffar had towards who? The believers. This is how they treated them. So now in that, you know, in that sense, you can imagine the Sahabi when he's making da'wah to this deen. And he's constantly being insulted. Not only is he being insulted, what he says is being insulted. Remember Asatirul Awali? Right? So what they, they are being insulted. Their messenger is being insulted. He's called Lamajnu. He's called insane. And then they're being ridiculed. Aradhilud are low class. These, these filth, these insane people. Right? And then on top of all of this, now Allah Azza wa Jal gives them some, some just words, just words. And that's enough for them to keep going in the work of the Allah. Allah gives them, you know what, these people, they have, no, what drinks do they have? Let me show you what I'll give you. First of all, your record is in the Illiyin. And nobody can even, even fathom what, what Illiyun are. This amazing record of every last good deed you have done. Imagine what's going on with the Sahabi now. How strong is he going to be in his da'wah? And then Allah says, then you're going to be up there, you're going to have these drinks. And they're going to be sealed just for you. And then this, this seal, and you know, the words in the, in the Arabic language, especially uh, Quranic Arabic, ancient Arabic, they're very picturesque. So Allah is making you visualize the bottle. And the bottle has what on it? 
a seal. It's got a seal on it. And you're sitting on your couch and you've been given this bottle. And you know where they used to drink? Where did the Arabs used to drink? Out of a well. Right? This was a, you know, you don't get served. This is the elite thing, the king's thing to get served. The average Arab has to go out and dig the, out of the well or drink out of the pond or the lake or whatever. Now he's, he, even the seal has as an incent. The seal has this perfume like smell. Not even the drink. The drink hasn't even been opened yet. It's the seal. Khitam. Khitamuhu misk. Wa fi dhalika fal yatanafas al mutanafisun. Then in that, those who compete, they should compete in this. This is something worth competing. Allah draws an image of me just being there in that luxury and putting that before me. Then after that is done, no matter what the kuffar say, does it matter anymore? No, because the, the believer, what does he see now? He sees that Jannah. He sees and he Sari'u ila maqfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin. Sabiqu ila maqfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin. Right? Run towards the paradise. Rush towards the paradise. Raise towards the paradise. Let's look at the word tanafus. By the way, a similar ayah occurs in Surah Al-Safat where he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For the likes of this, let the people who do work, let them put in the work. Let them get to work. Allah Azza wa Jal says tanafus here. At-Tabari comments, التنافس مأخوذ من شيء نفيس الذي يحرص عليه الناس وتشتهيه وتطلب تطلبه نفوسهم والمعنى فليستبقوا في طلب هذا النعيم. Beautiful. He says this word تنافس tells us that they're running towards something so elegant, so classy, so exotic. And this is something when the, all the people want it. They really, really want it. You know, and they're, they're all competing towards it in the spirit of healthy competition. So here the Sahaba are being ridiculed and even persecuted and tortured and they're nudging each other saying, saying who's going to get the Rahiq al Maktoum first? Let's see who gets there first. They're competing with each other in this. The, the, the problems of the world, Allah has taken them away from the believer. He's put them in a different state. And you know when the kuffar see that different mindset set you in, what do they call you? They call you crazy. What are you happy about, man? We're torturing you. What's the smile on your face for? He doesn't see it. He doesn't understand why this person is being ridiculed and insulted and humiliated and every, all of his dignities have been stripped from him and yet there's a big smile on his face. Not only that, the, these guys are competing with each other and getting in more trouble. <laughs> they, don't, it's, they can't fathom it. But this is the, the, the mindset, the iman that the Sahaba tasted when they heard the word of Allah. May Allah give us that taste of Quran. So now... After this, Allah Azza wa says, وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْلِيمِ he, he takes the imagination further. By the way, this, this khitabu who missed, the seal is made of this musk, this beautiful scent. You should compete towards this. The passage began with al-abrar, the righteous. The righteous, the few righteous will get to this point. But then there's even a higher level. Allah takes their imagination even further. SubhanAllah. وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْلِيمِ Mizaj, in Arabic, mazaj al-sharab was used when you mix the drink. Okay, like you know, nowadays you have like, you know, Ovaltine or Quick or something, you mix it in the milk, right? Or, or some kind of mix you put in your drink to, to give it a new flavor. So when the Arabs would mix something in your drink, that was called Mizaj or Mazaj also, or, or Mizj also. Now, Tasneem in the, in the language comes from Sanam, and Sanam is the hump of a camel. Tasneem means a very high place. Also means to elevate something, like they will say Tasneem al qubur to raise the graves, to elevate the, the grave site and to make it higher above ground. Okay, So Allah says the mixture of it, meaning the, the drink is something, but you know you add some sugar to it or you add some flavor to it, that flavor has been added from a very high fountain or a very high waterfall up there somewhere because and it's called tasneem. So the drink itself is not tasneem, but it's got a little bit of mix from tasneem. Now when you taste that tasneem, what do you want? You say, where, what's that mix? I want to go where this came from. But where did it come from? It came from very high. So now the abrar are enjoying this drink and they, they talk to each other and say, did you taste that flavor, that new thing in there? Yeah, yeah, that's the sneem. Dude, where do you get the sneem? And so now look at the next ayah. Aynan. The sneem is a waterfall. It's a spring. And this is lilikhtisas. Yashrabu biha al-muqarrabun. The people, the closest to Allah will be sitting next to this waterfall, not yashrabu minha, yashrabu biha. Biha here, what it gives is dharf makan. They'll be sitting right by it, right by this waterfall where it starts, and they're drinking from it directly. The abrar, the righteous, are drinking a mix from the, and they're loving that too. 
But those who are close to Allah, al muqarrabun what are they enjoying? This leave itself, subhanAllah. Allah gives us degrees of paradise. So the and, and the ulama comment, عَيْنٌ عَالِيَةٌ شَرَابُهَا أَشْرَفُ شَرَابٌ وَأَصْلُ التَّسْنِيمِ وَأَصْلُ التَّسْنِيمِ لِيَرْتِفَاعٍ وَمِنْهُ سَلَامُ الْبَعِيرِ Right? The, this is a very high drink. And the origin of tasneem is something very high. Something that in addition you should know. And this was commented on by uh, Ash-Shawkani, rahmahullah. Tasneemun, ismun li'aynin fil jannah, yashrabu minha al-muqarrabun surfan. This is the name of a waterfall or a, of spring in paradise from which the closest to Allah will drink. May Allah make us from them. يَمْزِجُ مِنْهُ الرَّحِيقُ الَّذِي يَشْرِبُ مِنْهُ الْأَبْرَارِ فَدَلَّ ذَلِكْ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ دَرَجَةَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ فَوْقَ دَرَجَةِ الْأَبْرَارِ this, this illustrates that the rank, you know, because the, the, the people, and the, the righteous, who are still living it up, because they've got the couch, they've got the people serving them drink, they've got the bottle, they've got the seal. But the, this illustrates, the language illustrates that those who are closest to Allah, they will be in a higher position than even the righteous. It establishes a, a gradation here, subhanAllah. So on the one hand, Allah spoke of the worst of the worst of the worst criminal. And on the contrast, He spoke of the people who earned the closest rank with Allah. That Allah spoke about another place. He says, As-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon, ulaik al muqarrab The first of the first. Those are the closest ones. So what does it mean first of the first? The first, first, first ones, he would say. These are the people, you know, when the messenger makes the claim that an angel comes and delivers me this message, that this is not words I'm making up on my own. Who believes in me? It's easy to call him crazy. Imagine your neighbor came to you and said, hey man, an angel came to me and talked to me. You need to believe in everything I say because it's from God. It's as crazy, it sounds as crazy today as it sounded 1400 years ago. At that time, the first person to say, you know what, that's not crazy, I believe in you in public. And whatever you say I will do, I will not question because I know it's not coming from you, it's coming from a higher source. I will not question it. I don't care what people call me. I don't care who disowns me. I don't care what they do to me. I'm standing by you. How hard is that to do? It's easy for us to be believers because there's so many of us. There's so many of us. How easy is it when you're the only one? When you're, and you're, you have to believe in this guy who everybody calls crazy. Everybody calls him insane. And whatever he says, they ridicule. They mock. You, you're going to be right in that position the moment you say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu So this, this position these Sahaba put themselves in is such a painful position and so Allah compensates them by saying, no, you'll enjoy tasneem. You have the highest rank. The, the righteous will get something, but you, you're up here, al-muqarrabun. May Allah make us from al-muqarrabin. Now at the end, you see how Allah puts things. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions now at the end something about al-fujjar again, these criminals again. Right? These worst kinds of disobedient or, or rebellious to Allah. But at this point, when you hear these ayat, put yourself from the perspective of the believer, it's not even going to touch you. So what? Look, No doubt those who engaged in crime, and this uh, ijram in Arabic is not just to have crime, but to actually eventually see the consequences of your crime too. It actually illustrates one who sees the consequences of their crime. So those who engage in this crime and implied who will see the consequences of them have been making fun. Kanu, they have been making fun or they had been poking fun or they had been laughing at Yadhakun. They had been laughing at the believers. They heard these words of the believers. They saw the joy on the believers' face and they said, look at these morons. Look at these nut jobs. They believe in this stuff. Let me, let me write a skit in my comedy about them. How much comedy has been written about Muslims in paradise in the last six, seven years? Right, because it's it's funny to them. It's funny, because you know we're we're the object of ridicule. These guys believe in paradise, and that's why they do these crazy things. And they're all, you know. And so even you know when when you talk to um, Christians nowadays, they train themselves in da'wah, right, to the Muslims. And one of the things they train themselves in is poking fun at Jannah. That's one of the like like da'wah things that they do. Oh yeah, you guys believe in this or that or the other in paradise. You get these rivers and all that. Like yeah, we do, and you don't. So you want to join me? <laughs> right? So we have to have this, this, this confidence. And that this is not just fantasy that Allah is drawing for us. This is real. This is real. But right now, the way things are right now, it is real to us. But for everybody else, this is a, this is a thing to make fun of. So the thing I want to illustrate to you here that's really powerful is the word kanu. You see, the Quran is full of iltifat. Iltifat means transition. 
Transition happens from first person to second person to third person. It also happens from the past to the future. Some ayat are talking about the future. What's going to happen on the Day of Judgment? All of a sudden Allah talks about something that's happening right now. The tatfif al-mizan, waylu lil-mutaffifin, al-ladina idha ktalu ala nas yastawfoon, wa idha kaluhum awazanuhum yukhsiroon. Was that happening in the future or right now? That was happening right now. But then, as, as we went forward, yasqawna min rahiqim makhtoom, khitamuhu misk. Was that happening then or right now? That's later on in the future. So the ayat travel from the future to the present, future to the present, sometimes past to present. But these ayat are speaking about current events in the past. Kanu. I need you to understand this. Allah is not saying disbelievers make fun of believers. He's saying disbelievers used to. There's no doubt those who engaged in crime used to poke fun at, used to laugh away at those who believed. So how is he talking about it? As though it's something in the past. The way this is, is situated, what was mentioned right before the people of Jannah? So the way it's situated in its balagha, it illustrates the people are in Jannah, they're enjoying all this drink, and a memory passes in their mind. Remember when they used to make fun of us? Remember those who were criminals used to make fun of those who believed they used to laugh at us? وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ And when they would pass by them, they would wink at each other. They would, you know, ghams in Arabic is to make gestures with your eyes. And one of the worst insults you can do to somebody even nowadays is roll your eyes at them, right? They're talking to you and you're like, you know, you, you could do a lot with your eyes. You could do a lot with your eyes. So you, you, a bunch of you are walking by, right? And there's a Muslim over there. And what do you do? <laughs> you know, you're doing all this just with your eyes. Just with your eyes. You're poking insults at them. So Allah even captures that much of their crime. The worst of their crimes he captured. He illustrated. But even the crimes of the kafir against the believer, not that he kills them. Right? Why are they taking revenge from the believers? Why are they throwing them in pits made of fire? Why are they torturing them? Why are they killing them? Those are big crimes. Here, what crime has Allah illustrated? Just the way they look at them. Just the way they look at them. When they pass by them, meaning when the believers pass by the disbelievers, the believers wink, they make eye gestures to insult them. And the other way around, when the disbelievers pass by the believers, they make comments with their eyes. The way they look at them, the insulting way and the ridiculing way in which they look at them. Then, Now that they're done poking fun at the believers, they return to their families. And we will find this a consistent theme Allah talks about, returning to the family. These, these uh, kuffar, they return to their families. For example, in Surah Al-Qiyamah, ثُمَّ ذَهَبَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ يَتَمَطَّى Right? He returns to his family all happy. I've, you know you know how I insulted those Muslims today? Man, these guys are funny. These guys, are, they look so funny. Did that, And we, we were just standing there. And man, did we make a fool of them. And so they, they have this, they enjoy making fun. So what they do is when they return to their family, they return full of joy. Fakihin comes from, from fakiha, which is a fruit. So they, they enjoyed poking fun at the believers so much, it's like they can taste the fruit in their mouth. Oh my God, that was awesome. That was so funny. And so the scholars comment, Fakihin, Mu'jibina, Mutaladhidin. They're so happy they can taste the joy of insulting the believers. And they go share these stories about how they made fun of Muslims with their families. You know, there's this is a contrast. By the way, is this this is happening in dunya, right? But this is a memory of those who are in paradise looking back. But the reality, what happened in reality, we already read. Yawma yafirrul mar'u. مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي سُبْحَانَ الله. That same guy who went to his home running happy, hey, look who I made fun of. Is he going to be running towards that family or running away from them when the time comes? He's running away from those same people. The reality has completely reversed. But right now, it's, it's the way it is. So these believers think back and they, you know, they, they recall when they used to poke fun. وَإِذَا رَأَوْهُمْ And even when they would see them, this implies kind of a تَبْعِيد, a distance. So these non-Muslims, those who poke fun are here, the Muslims are over there. وَإِذَا رَأَوْهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ لَضَالُّونَ When they saw them, they said, these people, man, they're so confused, they're so lost. These are the truly lost. You know what they're, they want this paradise. That's why they're acting like this. They could do their day and night, they're trying to spread this message. They stick around this man, who we think is, in, we're pretty sure he's insane, ma'adullah. They're lost. Look at these poor people. So they look at them with pity even. 
they have pity for the Muslim. I feel sorry for you, man. That's what they their attitude towards the Muslim. Inna haula ila dalun. You'll find people like this even today. Even today, you'll find people that look at the Muslims and say, "Oh man, I just feel so bad for you, man. Let me help you out. Let me give you some some other religion to follow." There's pity for the Muslim because what foolish religion are you following? Now Allah says, "Wa ma ursilu alayhim hafidin." It's so incredible that Allah says this. He's, this is, this ayah has been interpreted in two very different ways, and both of them are pow- very powerful. Allahu alam, Allah means both. He, the literal meaning is, and they had not been sent upon them as guardians. Meaning these disbelievers were not sent to watch over the believers. What are you so worried about that they're lost or not lost or you know, you, you know what they, how they live and what they aspire towards? What's in any of your business you're so concerned that they're lost? So this is one interpretation. This has been uh, uh, attributed by many. But another is actually that this is a continuation of what the Fujjar say. And that, or the, uh, the Mujrimun say. And that completely changes the taste of these words. Let me explain to you how. These, the, what this basically means is they're looking at the, the Muslims and they say, look at, look at how they're lost. And they say, these Muslims, they haven't been sent to the society to guard over them. Why are they commenting on who, who, who cheats how much in the scales? Why are they telling us don't bury the baby daughter? Why are they getting in, up in our business? Who made them in charge? Who made them guard over our affairs? Why are they acting like they're so watchful over our affairs? So they... They have this criticism of the Muslims that they are correcting the evils of society, getting into the society's business. But you know, in the previous surah, Allah has already told us, the Muslims are not watchful over you. You already have someone watchful over you. Inna alaykum the hafidin. Their criticism is, these Muslims are the hafidin. No, 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 we're not the hafidin. You already have hafidin. Kiram and katibin, ya'lamuna ma ta'falun. You know, you have noble writers, they know exactly what you're doing. We don't have to keep record or watch over what you're doing. Allah has already put that mechanism in place, subhanAllah. فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ Then on that day, now this, the scene goes back to the future. Again to the, the day of judgment. Then on that day, as a result, those who believed will be poking fun and be laughing at the kuffar. مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ Now we said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا Not إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا We didn't find the kuffar before we found those who committed the crimes. And the crimes have been listed before. The crimes have been listed. Remember they poked fun at the ayat, called them Asatirul Awaleen, they did Tatqif al Mizan, they did a few things that were listed. So they were the criminals. On the day of judgment, the believers will not only be laughing at these criminals, they will be laughing at what? All kuffar. Whether they did this or not, so long as they disbelieved, they will be the object of ridicule. In Surah Al Baqarah, we find, Zuyina lil ladhina kafarul hayatul dunya, wa yaskharuna min al amanu. Worldly life was beautified. For those who disbelieve. And they poke fun at those who, do, those who believe. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And those who had taqwa, they'll be above them on the day of resurrection. The, the roles have been reversed. The same reversal of roles applies here. All kuffar, they will be poking fun at them. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ Second time. They will be on these high couches, reclining, relaxing, looking around, having full view. Now what are they, before what were they looking at? Naim, all the blessings. What are they looking at now? They're looking at the people that are making them laugh. Who's making them laugh? The kuffar. They're looking at the disbelievers. They don't even have to look down. They can relax, recline back, and they can still see the disbelievers. And now those disbelievers are burning, and they're recalling, didn't you find our whole thing about hellfire funny before? I don't see you laughing down there. Because it sounds looks pretty funny now, actually, now that you think of it. So now the disbelievers are getting their revenge. The insults that were hurled at them are being hurled back at the disbelievers. Look at how the surah ends. Thawab in Arabic is to get a good salary. To do good work and to get good back. Have those who disbelieve been paid a good salary for everything they used to do? Sarcasm from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps even sarcasm from those who are in the paradise, they're looking at those burning down below who are screaming, hey, we're Quraysh, we're from you, can you help us out here? Throw us a drink or something. And they act like they don't even hear them, they say to each other, I wonder if the disbelievers got paid what they deserved, based on what they did. Adding insult to injury, subhanAllah. So, have the disbelievers been, been dealt, have they been given in full, great pay, great pay, great compensation, sarcasm. 
over what they used to do. Final, a little bit of comment over يَفْعَلُونَ as opposed to يَعْمَلُونَ يَعْمَلُونَ يعمل means to do and act consciously, to think about it and do it. يَفْعَلُونَ you don't even think about it. Why يَفْعَلُونَ because these fujar, do they think any more about the consequences of their actions? No. The fujar, doesn't, they don't think. So they don't do amal even, what do they do? They do fi'l, it's thoughtless action. They're thoughtless in their, in their, in their disbelief. Finally, we, we, we conclude in uh, tying the end of the surah with its beginning. Uh, we, we also conclude with a comment of Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah. Juzi al-kuffaru fil akhirati bima kanu yaf'alunahu bil mu'mineen min as-sikhriya wal istihza' Naam. Have they been given, the, these people, have they been given what they deserved when they made fun of the believers, when they made fun of the ayat? Have they been given what they deserved? Absolutely. Naam. So he ends with that, that word. We began in the, we started in the beginning with the ayah, وَيْلُ mutaffifin. Ultimate destruction falls upon those who make a little bit of profit by giving people less or taking back a little more. This is the mutaffifin. And at the end, what does Allah say? What, what do they want? Money in the end. They wanted some profit. Allah says, did they get a good compensation because of what they used to do at the end? You see how they're tied together? The conclusion, the beginning of the surah and its conclusion, subhanAllah. So the, so how the surah begins, it wraps itself around and comes to its conclusion. InshaAllah ta'ala, we begin our study of Surah Al-Inshiqaq next week. SubhanakAllahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu alaykum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.